What can one say about Regina? Well, if one can sit through the obligatory and incongruous soft rock tune that opens Terror at Red Wolf Inn, what is it with early 70s movies and overproduced soft rock theme songs, anyway? One can immediately say Regina is one of the most gullible people who ever lived. A college co-ed at an unnamed, but one gathers very dull university. Regina does the 1972 equivalent of answering that Nigerian millionaire lady's email. When she gets an offer for a free vacation and, while giggling inanely, actually agrees to be kidnapped by charter flight that very day. I got this letter and it says that I won something? <laughs> That's crazy. You must be putting me out. I didn't enter anything. Despite being maybe the biggest sucker in human history, things look kind of good for Regina at first. She's given her very own plane, a luxury the farm girls bowled over by. And once she arrives at her host family's house, she's treated to a fabulously indulgent dinner in the company of like-minded peers. Hello. Hi. I'm a model. The only trouble in paradise is baby John, the host couple's grandson, who gets involved in a high-speed chase while driving Regina from the airport and just generally acts a bit odd. I think I love you. This doesn't stop the boy crazy, and as previously established, not terribly bright, Regina from instantly begging to jump his bones. Once arrived, Regina trades anxieties about her figure with fellow vacation bait suckers Pamela and Edwina, who, like Regina, are pretty much lookers and, like Regina, are among the duller tools in the shed. Hello. Hi. I'm a model. But the girls are too transfixed by the delicious food to notice that their hosts appear to be batshit insane. Regina, particularly, doesn't think it odd that the Smiths keep putting her off whenever she asks to use the phone. Or that her fellow guests keep vanishing under half-explained circumstances. Or that their disappearances coincide with greater plenitude at the dinner table, even though the Smiths never seem to actually go grocery shopping. Despite its problems, Terror at Red Wolf Inn is one of the more watchable movies in the Mill Creek Nightmare Worlds collection. Its pacing is calm and deliberate, and it manages to set itself up as a black comedy rather than a mystery. This keeps the viewer from feeling uh, cheated when the movie telegraphs its central secret early on, and also makes its more outlandish moments seem deliberately funny. Linda Gillen turns in a charming performance as Regina, and plays her plot-advancing gullibility in the key of youthful naivete rather than outright stupidity, so we don't get too frustrated with her when she falls for ruses no able-minded adult should. The only exception to this is uh, when she manages to break free of the Smiths and commandeers a small boat, but only goes a few hundred feet down the river before seeking help at the nearest house, even when all the while you're screaming at her to put miles between herself and the, and the inn. Gillen, incidentally, went on to do quite a bit more work in TV and film, even working with Ridley Scott in a small role in 1989's Black Rain. No-name actor John Nielsen is also effective as Baby John, successfully balancing charm and menace so that you can see Regina's motivation for being drawn to him. But he is also credible but he outs when he outs as an antagonist. And the direction, though mostly confined to the interiors of the inn, is visually lush when need be. And it needs to be, to make a drab Midwestern college look interesting. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, it's hard to watch Red Wolf End without thinking of a somewhat better known horror movie that came out a couple of years later. In fact, Red Wolf reads basically like the missing link between Psycho and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It has the Twilight Zone-ish feel of the Hitchcock masterpiece, but its crazed family gruesome undertones and fear of the rural countryfied other so signal Toby Hooper's seminal splatter flick that you wonder if maybe he caught Red Wolf on a matinee when it came out. This is a tricky movie to classify. Is it a horror or a romance? A thriller or a comedy? Red Wolf is instead a movie that demands to be taken on its own merits by Holmesman Bud Townsend, an underutilized director who, based on this movie as well as the oddly magnificent porn musical adaptation of Alice in Wonderland he did a few years later, 
deserved to get a lot more work than he ended up with. Townsend appeared as a father and, uh, a father and daughter team with real-life fledgling Patricia Townsend, which begs the question, if your dad directed a porn musical, would you watch it? In the talky divorce drama Always But Not Forever by longtime associate and fancy pants director Henry Jaglum. Listen to this. Some women can control the penis to such a degree that they can flip the head against the cervix to amplify the pleasurable sensations to an extreme. Townsend might, may not have gone on to do much, but uh, he does well on Red Wolf Inn, serving up a cynical dark satire that works despite being unsure what it's satirizing. Unless it's the human race at large, either for being so despicable it would feed on its own, or so daft it would foolishly allow itself to be. Sleepwalking. Myra! Myra! My Joni! 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 I want something! Hey! 